Can AI help you find your soulmate? So no matter what's going on out there, human beings always have urges, right? They have the urge to procreate. You have the urge to... They have, they have many, many... Or human beings have all these urges. And the urge to procreation is huge. Right? Many people want to pass on their genetic pool. So they want to meet somebody and be able to marry them or, or have children with them and pass on their genetic, their genetic stuff, their genetic material. So there's still a huge drive in human beings. We haven't evolved this thing out of humanity yet. It might go some point, at some point in the future. I was, I was joking the other day about writing a story that was set in the year 4000, maybe beyond the time we care about race, we care about sex, we care about gender, we care about any of those things. And I was thinking to myself, I could write this story and submit it to an editor, and the editor might say, well, I'm not going to accept your story because there aren't any black people in it, and there's no gay people in it, and there's no trans people in it, and there's... But, but did you read the story? We have evolved beyond race. We've evolved beyond gender. We've evolved beyond any of that stuff. We've evolved beyond sex. We're... we're, we're we're sprites in a machine. And we can be whatever we want to be. We, we can be elephants if we want. Because, oh, no, no, it doesn't have those characters in it, so I'm, I'm not going to prove it. It's a joke, folks. It's a joke, okay? Maybe, maybe you're not. But we are, at this point, still interested in procreation. We're still interested in having kids. We're still interested in, 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 in expanding the human race. We're still interested in procreation. So we're still interested in having mates. And even if we're not interested in procreation, we're still interested in love. We're still interested in finding a soulmate or at least somebody we can spend our lives with. Someone so that we're not so alone, we're not feeling so alone. And especially after COVID, a lot of people feel extremely alone. So there's a number of apps that are out there right now that, of course, there's dating apps like eHarmony and, and Tinder and Match, which are helping people put people together and each of those have already added AI components to help people meet each other through AI components. And there was a story in AIDaily.us, which is our sister publication, talking about how even the city of Tokyo is getting into it. So because of Japan's declining birth rate, they are looking, they've launched a new dating app to help people meet each other. And I think there's an AI element to that as well. So AI is infecting the ability for us to mate and procreate. And that can only be a good thing if you want to mate and procreate, right? So one of the most interesting apps that I've heard of that's recently that's come out is called Riz. And Riz is, of course, the Gen Z term for charisma. And the whole concept behind the app is that it helps you to chat with somebody. So what ends up happening is that, let's say you're in one of these dating apps and you're talking to somebody back and forth and you want to appear as the most charismatic individual in the world. You want to really impress this person on the other side of the chat. You want to impress them so much that they might be able to meet you in person or whatever. And because we've gone through a period with coronavirus and all these other things where we are we're all socially, we all have a touch of social anxiety. Some of us have more than others. Some have none, but there's still some people with still have a touch of social anxiety due to, due to uh, COVID. That and just not just COVID, all sorts of reasons are contributing. Remember, I was talking to him earlier this week about Homo Nexus, how we've become hyperconnected humans, and these hyperconnected humans don't necessarily need to talk directly to other humans. They could just do it over over phones or th even through AI. This AI helps you to chat with somebody. It pulls up chat lines, and you can pick it. So basically, it works in conjunction with your dating app, and it will actually give you a set of responses that you can send back to the other person. So it's kind of like a helper, a little bit of a guide to help you to have that conversation with somebody and maybe lead to a date or a meetup or a Zoom call or whatever, FaceTime, whatever whatever works. Expand, like bring the connection closer. And some people are, are deriding this thing as going, oh my God, that's the worst possible thing that could happen because this AI is not the really the real person that you're talking to. And other people are like, wow, this is the best thing that, that could ever happen because I have social anxiety and I couldn't talk to these people. I have no idea what to say. I, gotta, I can't put two words together. So the AI really helps me do that. And 
From my perspective, I think it's great that the AI is helping, but at the same time, the human being absolutely needs to look at the responses from Riz and go, is this something that I would say? Because a lot of times, if it knows you, if it's gotten a little bit of information about you, if it knows a little bit about you, basically by looking at your previous chats and understanding the way you speak, then what's wrong with a little bit of assistance? from an AI guide. Like I've said before many times, AI is not creating this stuff out of the blue. It's creating this stuff out of words and phrases and terms that have already been used successfully by other people. And it's just giving them to you in the moment that you need them. Think of it as just-in-time learning. Oh, that's a great line. I wish I could have come up with it. If you think about it, you could be sitting in a room with a bunch of your friends chatting with this person on the other end of the dating app, and somebody else could be saying, hey, say this to her, or say that to her, right? It's the same as doing something like that. So if you ask me, AI-assisted dating is not a bad thing, because if you think about it, in the end of the day, what are you trying to do? You're trying to get two people together for some kind of a relationship. And if AI can help with that, I think that can only be a good thing. There's so many things that AI is doing that people think is terrible. But if you ask me, it can all be looked at in a positive light because AI is a helper. And like I said before, it's not just a computer helping you. It's the sum total of humanity that's been <laughs> entered into this LLM. It's providing these, co these comments and these, these, these chats for you to use. Why not leverage them? That's it for me for today. See you next time, and until then, don't forget to think future.